Good evening, teacher. How are you? I'm doing well. What about you? Fine. Thanks for asking. Are you ready for the exam? It's so so. <laughs> you, you have to say yes. That, okay. Yes. <laughs> that, that is the attitude. That is the attitude. Good. It's the so it's social pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Do you do the exercises? Yes, yes, I I did the exercises the the Monday not Thursday. Okay. Good. Also the for evaluado. Yes. Good. Well, I guess the other ones are going to join us later. I have Melvin in the traffic jam, Oscar in the traffic jam. I guess Caesar in the traffic jam. So many people in the traffic jam. And consider I guess. Yes. Yes, because for for me today the route was very uh, very heavy in the traffic. The road. Yes. Yes. Cecilia, good evening. How are you? Good evening, teacher. I find you. I'm good. Thanks for asking. So I hope the other ones can join us later. And as you know, today is last day. So we are going to have three things. First of all, we are going to have the review for the units. Then you're going to have the final test that is about the last two units. And uh, finally, you need to, to answer a survey. So I'm going to send you the link to the WhatsApp group. And there you're going to complete it. As you know, it is always the same thing. So just okay. connecting right now. All right, so let's get started with the attendance. Good evening, Joshua. Good evening, teacher. How's it going? I'm doing well, thanks. Thank you. I'm good, thanks for asking. All right, so let's see what we got. So I'm going to show you the screen. When you hear your name, you know that you have to say present. There you go. So let's start with the first one. Felix Ernesto Castellanos is not here, maybe later. Josué Mundo Avalos. Present. Good. Carlos is not here. Cesar is not here for the moment. Christian is not here for the moment. Herman is from Insafort. Adolfo is not here for the moment, maybe later. Cecilia Guadalupe Castro. Present. Good. Nancy is not here right now, maybe later. David Ricardo Leon is not here. Well, Christian is connecting right now. Luis is not here. Carolina couldn't continue. Hugo, Ernesto Fonseca. Present. Good. Melvin Jonathan Gallardo is not here right now. Oscar is in the traffic jam. Constantino. He's going to connect in some minutes for his from Insa Fork and Raul is not here. So Christian, Christian Armando Cardona. Present, I am connecting right now. Okay, good. So that's what we got right now. All right, so as I was saying before, we are going to have the final test today. And in that final test, um, you're going to have the topics that we had in the last two units. I consider that one of the most difficult topics probably was um, how to use probably the would you mind and could. 
probably, because some of you forget that after would you mind, you need to use the ING form, but that's the only thing. Then I consider that it's kind of easy. So let's start with the first part. I'm going to show you on the screen the first topic that we had in the unit, number three. And then we are going to have an activity to see if you really understood this topic. Can you see the screen, guys? Not yet, teacher. Now? Uh, it's loading. Oh, yes. OK, good. So it says, um, you use could and would you mind to ask for polite request? So that was the first topic that we had in unit number three. And if you remember, we were saying the difference between could and would you mind. We said that could is polite. Yes, it is polite, it's formal. But would you mind is more formal than could. Yes, it's like if you have can, could, and would you mind. When you say can, can is informal. You can use it with your friends. Can you open the door? Can you send me the information? So that is with your friends. A little bit more formal, you're going to say could. Could you send me the information? Could you open the door? And I die. Then uh, you have would you mind? Would you mind is more formal than could. So then you're saying, would you mind opening the door? Would you mind sending me the information? And like that. Now, what's the difference in a structure between could and would you mind? When you say could, the verb is in the base form. So you say, could you? open the door could you call me later could you make 10 copies of this paper could you contact the tech support yes so you always use the verb in the base form could you and the verb in the base form then the other option is using would you mind and when you say would you mind you need the jeton so would you mind calling would you mind getting would you mind sending so you need to use the gerund. Why do you use gerund? Because after the verb mind, you always use gerunds. So that's the difference. And also in meaning, as you know, the difference is that could is a little bit formal and would you mind is very formal. Yes? Now, the way that you answer to these questions or this request. First one, when you say, could you, or when you say, would you mind, you always have an answer, but you don't say yes, or you don't say no. Yes, the most common expression is to say, sure, no problem, right away, uh, of course. So those are the words that you're going to use in order to say yes or no. Obviously, you will never say no. If you can do it, you will tell your, your partner or your friend. I'm sorry, but, and then you say why well, you cannot do that thing. Yes, so that's basically the difference. So that was the first topic. Next one. The next topic was using should and shouldn't. So if you remember, should and shouldn't are used to give suggestions. Yes, to help people. So that is when you use should and shouldn't. So let's say that some of you have a problem and your problem is that you didn't study for the exam and the exam is today. So what kind of suggestion can you give to that person right now? It is too late, but probably that person can do something before the exam. So I can give you my suggestion and then I say, you should pay attention to the review. You should pay attention to the review. That's the only thing that you can do. You should pay attention to the review. Yes. And you shouldn't is the negative form. So I can tell you, you shouldn't be distracted. You shouldn't be distracted. 
So you should pay attention, you shouldn't be distracted. So this is what you're going to use to make suggestions or to tell people uh, things that they can do when they have a problem. You should is positive, you shouldn't is negative. You can say shouldn't the contraction or you simply say should not. Should not or shouldn't. Yes, so those are the two ways. Should positive, should not or the contraction shouldn't. And that's a difference. And when you say should, remember that the verb is in the base form. Same thing is going to happen with shouldn't. You use should and the verb is in the base form. So you cannot say she should work. Mm -mm. You only say she should work. Yes, you don't need to use the yes. You don't need to use the past. It's only the verb in the base form. Yes. Now, that was the second topic. Then we had like parts of an email. So we were checking who is Huawei. Huawei. Who is Huawei? Let's wait for Huawei. So, the next topic was how to make a, um, an email. So that was like parts of the email. If you remember, we were saying two is the person that the you're going to send the message to. Where you have CC is like a copy for someone else. And what it says subject is like the reason why you are sending that email. Yes. Then uh, you have the, the body that is the information. And at the end, you say goodbye. So when you say goodbye, remember that you have some expressions that you can use. Those expressions are like best regards, regards, looking forward to your comments, etc. Yes. Then uh, we were checking. In the last unit, unit number four, we were talking about reservations in a hotel. And we said that we have different ways to make reservations. Um, it might be for some people a little bit formal, for some people a little bit informal. So we can say that that is like, a, like optional, but I suggest that you use a formal way. So when you say, how can I help you? It's not very formal. If you say, how can I help you? It's not very formal. How can you change it to formal? You will use may, how may I help you? And that is going to be more formal. Yes, when you say may, it's more formal. Then uh, you have vocabulary like reservation, Smoking room, non-smoking room, short service. Um, if you remember, we had also vocabulary related to the facilities. And facilities, if you remember, are like parts of the hotel. So we had, I'm going to show you right now. In facilities we had, where are they? Over here. We had the laundry service. Uh, we had the business center and you also have some services like fridge in the room. You also have the laundry service, Wi-Fi, internet, wake up call, and more things that you can have in a hotel. So all those things are related to hotel. Now, later we were also checking how to express future plans. Someone has a dog. Okay, so then we were saying about future plans. So when you have future plans, you always use be going to, but you really, really need to pay attention to this because you can never say I going to. You don't need to say I going to. Yes, you have to say I'm, I'm going to, yes? 
So what are you going to do today? And then you say, oh, I'm going to play basketball. I'm going to swim. I'm going to dance. I'm going to play and the rest. Yes. So you're using first the verb be and then going to and the verb in the base form. So I'm going to play. I'm going to swim. I'm going to dance. And then if you want to make it negative, you only say aren't if it is or not, or you say isn't if it is is not, or if it is I, you say am not. So you have to say, for example, in negative, I am not going to play. I am not going to play. So that's negative. You're saying, I'm not going to play. I'm not going to swim. I'm not going to dance. And like that. Then if you say, um, he, for example, he's not going to dance. He's not going to play. He's not going to swim. And like that. So you're saying he is not going to. If it is she, she's not going to swim. She's not going to play. Or you can also use a contraction. That contraction is going to be isn't. Yes. So you can say she isn't going to play. She isn't going to swim. She isn't going to dance. And like that. Teacher, I have a question. Yes. In this time, in this time, always in the, the last sentence is the put the specific time, the specific uh, schedule. Um, For example, I'm going to study English after the class, or I'm going to read, in, read a book yes. at 8 p.m. Yes. It's necessary to put the specific time. Probably not the time, not the time like hours, but it can be by saying the, the, the day, for example. If it is today, if it is tomorrow, and like that. So let me see who is Huawei. Who is Huawei 2018? I guess Adolfo. I just want to make sure if it is Adolfo, because if it is Adolfo, he has to change it. His name. If not, it is another person who entered. Okay, so what you are asking, Joshua, um, it's not necessary to say the time, but you can say when, because most of the time when you have a plan, you are saying when is that plan. At least if the person that is asking you is asking you with a specific time. For example, what are you going to do tomorrow? What are you going to do tomorrow? And then you say, I'm going to play basketball. So if you say, I'm going to play basketball, you don't need to say tomorrow. Why? Because the person asked you in the question with the time that you want to know. Yes? So in that case, you only say, I'm going to. I'm going to play basketball. You don't need to say tomorrow. But if you are just describing your plan, you can do it. For example, hey, Christian, I'm going to tell you about my plans. Uh, I'm going to play basketball tomorrow. I'm going to dance on Saturday. And I'm going to watch a movie on Sunday. Yes? So there you're saying, like, activities that you're going to do and you're specifying when. Because if I only tell you, hey, Christian, I'm going to play basketball. I'm going to swim. I'm going to watch a movie. When? If I'm telling you about my plans, I need to tell you when I have that plan. Yes? So probably not the time, but the day. The day is super important, but the time, mm, it's not necessary. For example, if you say, I'm going to play basketball tomorrow. 
If you want to be more specific, I'm going to play basketball tomorrow at 2 p.m. If you want to be really specific, yes? Because the idea is basically to express that you're going to perform that action tomorrow. Yes? So another question? Teacher, when I use, I wanna, mm -hmm. uh, for example, I wanna read a book uh, tomorrow. Yes. In that case it is because it is informal. So gonna is to say going to quickly. Instead of saying going to, you say gonna and it is faster. So that is the reason why you're using uh, gonna just to reduce the time. For example, if you say, I'm going to play basketball, you spend probably like three seconds. But if you say, I'm gonna play basketball, you're saying it in two seconds. So that is the reason why uh, you can use gonna, especially when you are speaking. And when you are speaking in uh, casual conversations, Yes, when something is not formal. Yes, and when you are writing a letter, for example, or when you are sending an email, you don't have to use contractions. You don't have to say gonna. Why? Because it is only when you speak and when you write it only in informal situations. Yes, so that's how you use gonna. Is it clear, Melvin? Yes, teacher. Okay. Now, give me a second because Caesar is. Oh no, is Constantino had a problem. Well, all right. So whenever you say gonna, it's just in speaking situations, not in writing, not sending emails, not in a conference that is extremely formal. So gonna is more casual, yes, and especially when you're speaking. Now, if you want to create a question, if you say she is going to play soccer, and if you want to change it, you will say, uh, I'm, uh, she's going to play soccer. Question, is she? Is she going to play soccer? She is going to. Question, is she going to? So the only thing that you have to do is to switch the positions. In a sentence, first the subject and then the verb be, she is. In a question, the opposite, is she? In a sentence, you are. In a question, are you? Yes? So this is the way that you express plans using be going to. And also we were saying um, that when you make reservations, you can be formal too. And if you say, I want to make a reservation is not very formal. If you say, I need to make a reservation, it's a little formal. But if you want to be really formal, you will say, I would like to make a reservation. I would like to make a reservation. And in that case, you're being super formal. I would like to make a reservation. I want to make a reservation is not formal. So that's the difference when you say want, I want, I need, and I would like. Want is informal. Need is not formal, not informal. It's neutral. And would like is formal. So that's the difference. Then the vocabulary, like agent, guest, check-in, check-out, single room, double room, and the rest. And the exercises that we completed, I'm going to arrive on Friday 14th. I'm going to stay until Monday. Uh, Ms. Puentes is going to travel to Costa Rica on April 14th. So if you check over there, you always have the day not the time, but the day, yes? So the day is important to mention it, to know when you're going to perform that action. 
Then we were checking locations and we were saying that we have locations when you want to describe places or it can also be for things or for people. So the first one is next to and next to means a la par de. Then you have in front of. In front of means en frente de. But you need to be careful because in front of is face to face. If you have a street, you cannot say in front of. If you have a street, you're going to say across from. So in that case, let's see that you have the, the picture over there. If you can see there is a little star over there. Can you see that star? So that star is telling you that is exactly in front of the box. Yes, that is in front. If the star is on the other side of the street, that is not in front of, that is across from. Yes, in front of is just the star in front of the box. Across from is when you are on the other side of the street. Then we have between. Between is like in the middle of two things, two places or two streets or two people. Then across the street. You can say across the street. When you say across the street, you're saying al cruzar la calle, al cruzar la calle. And when you say across from, you have a place. Across from the hospital, across from school, across from the supermarket. So in that case, you're saying al cruzarse de, so across from, and then you mention the place. Next one is around the corner. When you say around the corner, you're saying a la vuelta de la esquina. Yes, around the corner. Then you say on the right, the supermarket is on the right, or the opposite, on the left. Or you can say the supermarket is down the street, down the street. Now, something that, that is not here is when you say on the corner of. Teacher, I don't listen. Oops, sorry. Uh, when you say on the corner of, you have two streets. One of the streets, let's say that is Melvin Street, and the other street is David Street. So when you say on the corner of, you need to mention the two of them. So I can tell you the supermarket is on the corner of Melvin Street and David Street. Yes, or you can say on the corner of Melvin and David. Not necessarily saying a street, but the name of the street. So every person that hears that you're saying on the corner of and then you say Melvin and David, they know that you're talking about streets. Yes, so on the corner of you mentioned the two streets. Remember this because it is coming on the test. When you say on the corner of, you mention the two streets that make that corner, yes? And this is what we studied in the last part that was about uh, location. And to finish, we had imperatives and those imperatives are instructions or orders that you give to people. So you can say, go straight, or go ahead or go straight ahead. You can say go, if you say go straight, it's like if you say vaya ser recto. If you say go past, you're saying uh, al pasar el supermercado, go past the supermarket. Then turn left. If you say turn left, you're saying gire a la izquierda. And then the opposite, turn right. And turn right is, uh, a la derecha, gira a la derecha. Then 
you have go up. If you say go up, you're telling the person, vaya hacia arriba. And the opposite, go down. And you mention the street. For example, let's say that we have a street and this street is called Joshua Street. So the supermarket is far from the place where I am. And then I can tell uh, Christian, hey Christian, do you know where the supermarket is or how can I get to the supermarket? And Christian tells me, oh, go up Joshua Street. Go up Joshua Street. So if you say go up Joshua St Street, you're telling me, vaya hacia arriba, or you can say walk, walk up uh, Joshua Street, camine hacia arriba la calle Joshua. Yes, and the opposite, go down, go down Joshua Street. And every time you're saying go up or go down, you need to mention the name of the street. And then if you say, for example, go on, when you say go on, you are saying continue. For example, uh, you are, uh, let's say, Salvador del Mundo and you want to go to Galerias. So you're going to say, go on for two blocks. Go on for two blocks is like if you're saying continue for two blocks. Yes, go on for two blocks or continue for two blocks. And the last one, take the first left. It's like if you're saying, uh, tome su primera, la primera calle que agarre o que encuentre a la izquierda, take the first left or take the first right. Tome la primera calle que encuentre a la derecha. O cruce. So it is like that. Or there was another person who asked me yesterday, tome, tome la primera calle a la derecha. So, o incorporese a la primera calle a la derecha. So it is like that. Take the first left, take the first right, and that is the expression. Now, if you check over here, in all these instructions, you don't have a subject. And why don't you have a subject? You don't have a subject because the subject is in front of you. So you need to say, you go up, you walk down. Mm -mm. You only say, go up, walk down, turn right, turn left, go straight ahead, or take the first left and take the first right. Christian? Yes. Uh, and, the, and the homework and, and the was are a mistake with uh, when you use the second left, or you turn on the second left, or you turn second left, only second left, you turn only, turn second left, or turn the second, turn on the second left. If, if you are talking about the name of the street, if you say the name of the street, you say on. Oh, okay. But if you if you don't have the name of the street, you're not going to say on because you're only saying turn left or turn right, but you're not saying which street. You're not mentioning the name of the street. If you mention the name of the street, you say on. So you will say turn right on First Avenue, turn left on Second Avenue. Yes. So you say on when you have the name of the street. If you don't have the name of the street, you only say turn left, turn right. Yes? Is that your question, Christian? Okay, thank you. Was that your question? Yes, it is. Okay, good. So if you have the street, you say on. If you don't have the street, you don't say on. You only say turn right, take the first left, take the first right. But if you mention the name of the street, you need to say on, mandatory. Turn right on Second Avenue, turn left on First Avenue. Yes? Good. 
So this is the way that you give instructions. And in the last thing that we studied yesterday was about transportation. And if you remember, we were saying that we have different kind of transportation. We have train, car, plane, motorcycle, subway, truck, helicopter, taxi, bicycle, ship. Some of you said horse. So you have different uh, kind of transportation. So when you say the way that you move from one place to another one, you always say by. By is for transportation. So if I say, for example, um, let's say that you have plane. So if you go to the US, how do you travel? By plane. So you will say by plane. You don't have to say um, in a plane or, or with a plane. You say by plane, you travel by plane. And if I tell you how you go to San Salvador downtown, you will tell me, I go by bus. I go by bus. Yes, I go by bus. Or I go by car. Or I go by bicycle, by motorcycle. So you give your uh, kind of transportation that you use in order to move from one place to another one. So you always say um, by, 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 and the transportation. The only one that is not going to be with by is foot. And, and this is the mistake that I told you that this book had, that this book says by foot, but you don't need to say by foot because by is for transportation and your foot are, well, your foot is singular, your feet, plural, are not transportation. So in this case, you will say, I go to the supermarket on foot because it is near my house, two blocks from my house. So I go to the supermarket on foot Yes, I go to the supermarket on foot, not transportation, so on foot. If I use transportation, I go to the supermarket by car, by bus, by train, and the rest. Yes? Now, we were also checking the difference when you say get and go. And we said that go is ir, and get is llegar. So that is the difference. I can ask you, how do you go to Infantile Park or how do you get to Infantile Park, Melvin? How do you get the Infantile Park? Exactly, get, because you want to, to know how you can arrive at that place. So when you say get in this context is similar to say arrive, yes? Now, David. Show me the truth. How do you say? Uh, here I'm, I'm giving you the two options. You choose one option or if you think that it's possible to do it with both, you can tell me with both. So okay. how do you say? I go to the supermarket by car or I get to the supermarket by car. Both are, are correct. Both are correct. Why? Because in one you're saying that you go and in the mm -hmm. other idea, what you're expressing is that you are right at the place. Yeah. Yes. In one, when you say go, you are in your house and you go to the supermarket. In the second one, you are not in your house. You are in the supermarket because you get to the supermarket. Yes. Mm. So that's the difference when you say go and, and get. Go is that you are probably in a place. You are, let's say that we have two places. We have place A in place B. If you say go, you are in place A and you go to place B. 
Yes. Yes. And if you say get, you are not in place A, you are already in place B. So that is the difference between go and get. Any questions, guys? Yes. And yes. in a, in this example, in this example, use both. Yes, you can use both. Because in the first one, you're expressing that you are in your house and you mm -hmm. go to the supermarket by car. And in the second one, you're saying that you are in the supermarket. So you get to the supermarket by car. Mm, That's okay. the difference. Go is ir and get is llegar. So yeah. go todavía está en el punto de partida y el get ya llegó al punto B. So that's mm. the difference. So you really, really need to pay attention to the difference between get and go. Now let's practice. We were saying at the beginning that when you have a request, you can ask people in two different ways. You can say could, and you can say, would you mind? And what's the difference? We were saying that you can use can, you can use could, and you can use would you mind. But when you say can, is informal. If you say could, is formal. Could is formal. But would you mind is more formal. So what is the difference between could and would you mind? The structure, could, and the verb in the base form. Could you open, could you play, could you read? Would you mind, you need a jeton. Would you mind playing? Would you mind reading? Would you mind working? Would you mind visiting? Would you mind dancing and the rest? Yes, so that's the difference. The verb is in the base form when you say could, and when you say mind, you need to use the jeton. Would you mind? Would you mind? And could you make? Could you open the door? Could you open the door? And with would you mind? Would you mind opening the door? Would you mind opening the door? Yes. So those are the two different ways. Questions about it? No questions? No? Now let's see. The way that you answer, we were saying that it's always, sure, no problem, right away, or right now, in a minute. So those are the ways that you answer. Now let's see, Nancy, can you ask Cecilia for a favor? Using could, and then you change it to would you mind? And Cecilia has to answer. Cecilia, would you mind sending the report? Right away. Good, 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 good. So you use would you mind. Now try to use the other option with could. Nancy? Mm -hmm. Let me see. Let's see. The, the same question, but using could. Could you send the in the report? The answer, Cecilia? Sure. Good. Good. So that's a way that you do it. When you say could, you have the verb in the base form. When you say would you mind, you use jeton. Yes. Second topic, we were checking should for suggestions in positive way and shouldn't for negative. Yes, should deberías and shouldn't no deberías. And shouldn't is the contraction for should not. So now let's see, I have a problem. My problem is that I have a lamp and that lamp is not working properly. So Joshua, make suggestions. Mm -hmm. 
should buy other plant. Should, should, not should, should. You should buy other plant. Another. Another plant. You Good. should buy another plant. Good. Another is singular. Other is plural. So another lamp. You should buy another lamp. Good. Melvin, another suggestion? You should change the lamp. You should change the lamp. Yes. Um, Oscar, another suggestion? Oscar? You should found, find on internet a new lamp. Good, good, good. Find is encontrar. Oh. Search. Found. Search. 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 Good. You should, you should search on internet a new lamp. Good, good, good. Felix? You should uh, attend the reception internet. Can you repeat, Felix? You should reset internet. No, Felix. The problem is that I have a lamp a lamp that is not working properly lamp lamp lampara you should repair the lamp okay maybe and then i get a short circuit in my house <laughs> good next one david okay My answer. Yes. But the same yeah. problem. My lamp is not working properly. Give me a suggestion. You wait, wait, wait. You can buy another lamp. Yes, it's similar to what Joshua said. And just remember that when you say should is more for suggestion, can is for possibilities. Uh, and you should buy another lamp. All right, so it's similar to what Joshua said, but good. Okay, so you should buy another lamp, you should fix the lamp, you should do this, 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 and this. Now, let's see if this is similar to what is coming on the test, how you would answer to this situation. Number one, Cecilia, how, um, there are three mistakes, there are three mistakes in the sentences that you have over here. So you have to identify one mistake, Cecilia and tell me the number of the sentence and tell me what the mistake is and how you correct it. Cecilia? Number two. Good. This purchase order. Okay, good. Now, how do you correct it? Could you fill this purchase order? Perfect, Cecilia. So it's no you could, because if you say you could, you are saying a sentence. You need to create a question. So the question is, could you? Good. Next one. Um, Hugo. What is the next mistake? In which sentence? 
in uh, number three, uh, you will you send in this invitation to your assistants? Uh, the the missing is sending. What is missing? Uh, no, it's incorrect. Sending. Sending is incorrect. Yes. And what is the correct way? Would you send this invitation to your assistant? No. And no, no, you're right, it's correct. Mm. Could you, could In that you... sentence, something is not correct, but what is it? Who knows the answer? Hmm. I know the answer. What is it? Uh, it's the mind. Will you mind sending this invitation to your assistant? Exactly. You need to say, would you mind sending? You see the gerund, but what is mind? So you need to use mind. Would you mind? Would you mind sending this invitation. Good. Next one, Caesar. It says, would you mind ordering something to it? Is that sentence correct or is that question correct? It's correct. Yes, it is. Next one, let's see. Felix, could you come in earlier tomorrow? We need to receive our visitors. Is that correct? The question is incorrect. And how do you correct it? You okay? The the the, the question is, is correct. No, it's not correct. Mm. Okay, okay. Um, uh, I don't know, teacher. Okay, you need to remember that the structure that we are checking right now is could and would you mind? Could and would you mind? When you say could, the verb is in the present, in the base form. When you say would you mind, you use the gerund. Would you mind playing? Could you play? Could you dance? But if you say, would you mind? Would you mind dancing? Could you dance? Would you mind dancing? So that is the difference. When you say could, the verb is in the base form. And when you say, would you mind? You use the gerund. So what is the mistake, Felix? Uh, will you call me early tomorrow? No. Listen again, Felix. And I will send it to you on chat so that you can see it. Right now, we are checking two structures. One structure is using could and the other structure is using would you mind. Yes, one is using could you, and the other one is using would you mind. So, Felix? Okay. Cool. 
uh, I see ing in the verb. Oh. You, so can you use ing in the verb when you say could? Phoenix. Uh, they form. Uh, the verb they form. All right. So how do you correct it? Could you come? Exactly. That is the correct answer. Could you come or would you mind coming? Those are the two possibilities. Could you come? If you want to use the gerund, you need to say, would you mind? So would you mind coming? Could you mind? Could, could you mind? Could you come? Could you come? Could you play? Could you open? Could you send? And if you use, would you mind? Would you mind sending? Would you mind opening? Would you mind playing? And like that. So pay attention to that. Could, the verb is in the base form. Would you mind? You need to use the jet. Now in the last unit, we were saying about vocabulary in hotels. So let's start with Oscar. Oscar, what's the meaning of a smoking room? Es cuarto para fumar. Okay, it's a bedroom where you can smoke. Yes, your bedroom where you're going to sleep, but you can smoke in that area. Yes, all the rooms in that area are, let's say, open for people who want to smoke. Now, next one, Joshua, what is shuttle service? It's a service that the, the hotel can go to the the airport and the hotel or... Yes. Okay. It's, it's transportation service. Exactly. So it's a transportation service that the hotel offers to you. They pick you up from the airport and they take you to the hotel. Yes, so that is shuttle service. You make a reservation at the hotel and they send a, 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 a car or a minibus to pick you up and go to the hotel. Next one, Nancy, what is amenities? Comodidades. No, amenities. Yes, just like this, comodidades. Mm -hmm. Let's see another person. Who knows the meaning of amenities? Exactly. Exactly. It's like uh, lugares disponibles or los parte de las instalaciones como facilities, verdad? Amenities, facilities. Los extras. Exactly. Now, the other one, what you were saying, Nancy, is accommodation. Yes, accommodation is like the room, how the room is, and like that, that is accommodation, your bedroom. And the amenities are like parts that you have in a, in a hotel like the terrace, if you have a bar, if you have a pool, a gym, a discotheque. So those are amenities. Now, next one, Cecilia, what is wake up call? Llamadas. Mm. What kind of calls? Recibir llamadas. Mm -hmm. Felix, what is wake up calls? 
The Carbonero is playing over there. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yes, Felix? Uh, the, the, uh, I am sleeping in the mm -hmm. other person cold. Perfect. And get up. Perfect. So, a wake up call is that when you're sleeping, the receptionist at the hotel will call you for you to wake up. Yes, maybe you have a meeting at 6 a.m. So you tell them, hey, can you call me tomorrow at 5 p.m.? 5 p.m., 5 a.m. And they call you, you wake up. So that is a wake up call. David, what is laundry service? Laundry service is the another person I ha, I watch the clothes. Yes, that they wash your clothes. Yes, you don't yeah. have to do it. Good, Christian. What is fridge in the room? Uh, refrigerador en habitación o oh, yes. entendería yo yes, a little refrigerator that you have in the room that is a fridge in the room Caesar, what is single room? Caesar? sorry, it's a small room just one for one person Small room for one person, but specifically because it has only one bed. One bed. Yes, one bed. Good. Now, the last part that we had is future would be going to. Future would be going to. Remember that you always use the verb be. And this is something that I really, really need that you pay attention to. Use the verb be. So don't make this mistake that I will type over here when you say this one I going to buy a car many people say it like this this is not correct why not because the tense is not going to the tense is be going to and the verb be in the present is M is an R. This is the verb in the present. M is an R. That is the verb B. So if the topic is B, going to, you need first the verb B and then going to. So you need to say, I am going to buy a car. Now, if you make contractions, what happens if you make contractions? If you make contractions, you always pronounce the verb be. You always use the verb be. So you have to say, I'm, I'm going to buy a car. I'm going to buy a car. Yes, you always pronounce it. Then, if it is negative, if it is negative, I am not, or I'm not. I'm not going to play, I'm not going to buy a car. And like that. And the last one, if you want to make questions, let's see. Hugo. This is a sentence that you're going to see on the screen. She is going to read a book. If you want to change that sentence to a question, Um, let me check this. Um, can I say, is, is she going uh, to uh, read a book? That is the answer, exactly. You don't say she is. She is sentence, question, 
is she is she, she going to read and that is a question no. and the last one felix So this is a sentence. They are going to dance in a question. Are they going to dance? Perfect. Are they going to dance? Good. Now, we were saying with Melvin that you can use contraction like gonna. Yes. But gonna is the contraction of going to. Only going to, not be going to. Gonna is the contraction of going to. So in a contraction, you will say always, I am going to play or I am, or the contraction, I'm gonna play. So you can use the two forms, but you always use the verb be. So I'm going to play or I'm gonna play, but you always use the verb be. So, any questions about that, guys? <clears throat> questions before starting the test? No? No. All right. We are going to start with the test. If you go to Schoology, there you will find on the week number four. In the last part, it says end of level test. So it means that this is the last evaluation that you have. Today we finish. So here you're going to see the questions. And the questions in the first part, you have a listening activity. You listen to the conversation and you write what people are going to do. So what are these people going to do? What is Michelle going to do? What is Kevin going to do? What is Robert going to do? What is Jackie going to do? So there you will have the options and you have to choose one. Here you cannot see it, but on your test, you have the options. Yes, on your test, you have the option. So you choose one of the options. Then you complete the exercises using simple past and the verbs that you have in parentheses. And you're going to ask me why simple past? Because this is the last test. So in the last test, you include also some topics about uh, previous units. So this is the only part that is about previous units. So here you have to complete the exercises using simple past. Something that I need that you pay attention to is that if you say, uh, for example, here in parentheses, you have the verb that you have to use. Last year, I, and here you have the verb in parentheses. So you put that verb over here in this space. But um, it has to be positive if the verb is positive, like in this case. But if you go to this one that it says not rain, not rain means that you have to write that sentence in negative. Yes. And if you go to the last one, the last one is a question. So you write the structure of a question. What is the subject that you're going to use? You. Yes. So complete it using simple past. In sentences, positive, 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 positive. This is only negative, then positive, and then question. Yes. Only the last one is a question. And only what it says rain is negative. Now, next part. Complete the exercises using be going to for the future. So you're going to complete be going to for the future. And there you have the verb in parentheses. It says they, and then it says it's two. So you complete it using uh, 
like um, using be going to in parentheses with the verb in parentheses, sorry, you put it in the in the space that you have over there. Number one says it. So you write it, they mm, going to, and then the verb, yes? So this is how you're going to do it in the same way. If you say not, that is negative. And if you see the question word, like in this one that says dinner, you have cook and you, this is a question that you need to create. My mother, positive. Dinner, a question using you with the subject you and cook for the future. Jack in negative, we in negative, I in positive, they in positive. Yes. Then you have another question. And this question says, what is your favorite childhood memory? What is your favorite childhood memory? And you need to write the the answer what is your favorite childhood memory yes so when we say childhood childhood means niñez yes niñez so i just need you complete this and i guess you will find a little part that is a reading section so complete the reading section too now Let's get it started. Access to Schoology and complete the exam. I have a problem with the, the, the listen part. I okay. can listen. Okay, so I will play it over here so that uh, everyone, everyone can complete this section. So I'm going to play it and you complete it. Hold on. I'm Al Rivers with KXQ News Radio. I'm talking with people waiting for the bus tonight. I'm finding out how they're going to spend their evening. What's your name? Michelle. I think you're going to go to the gym tonight. No, not tonight. I'm going to meet a friend. We're going to run together in the park. And what's your name? Kevin. Are you going home now, Kevin? No, not right now. First, I'm going to my friend's house. He has some new video games. Oh, I see. So you're going to play video games this evening? Yeah, I am. Can I ask your name? Sure. My name's Robert. Are you going to do anything interesting tonight? Well, my friend Chris is going to have a party, but I'm going to work at home. I have all my work right here in my briefcase. So you can't go to the party. You're going to work tonight. That's right. And what's your name? I'm Jackie. Do you have any plans for this evening? It's my sister's birthday tomorrow, so I'm going to bake a cake tonight. That's nice of you. Are you going to give her a party? Not really, but she's going to come over for dinner tomorrow night. All right, listen again. In, in your exam, here you have the options, so you have to choose one. Listen again. Good evening. I'm Al Rivers with KXQ News Radio. I'm talking with people waiting for the bus tonight. I'm finding out how they're going to spend their evening. What's your name? Michelle. I think you're going to go to the gym tonight. No, not tonight. I'm going to meet a friend. We're going to run together in the park. 
And what's your name? Kevin. Are you going home now, Kevin? No, not right now. First I'm going to my friend's house. He has some new video games. Oh, I see. So you're going to play video games this evening? Yeah, I am. Can I ask your name? Sure. My name's Robert. Are you going to do anything interesting tonight? Well, my friend Chris is going to have a party, but I'm going to work at home. I have all my work right here in my briefcase. So you can't go to the party. You're going to work tonight. That's right. And what's your name? I'm Jackie. Do you have any plans for this evening? It's my sister's birthday tomorrow, so I'm going to bake a cake tonight. That's nice of you. Are you going to give her a party? Not really, but she's going to come over for dinner tomorrow night. All right, so now complete the rest of the test. Pensé que no me... Pensé que no me...
these are finished Adolfo too yes All right, when you finish the exam, I'm going to send you to the WhatsApp group, the survey, survey encuesta, yes? So you need to complete the survey. And in the survey, well, I will tell you later, but I will send it to you so that you can know and complete it. Teacher, eh, está pidiendo en la encuesta un mm -hmm. número completo. De... Sí, ahorita, sí ahorita, ahorita se lo estoy enviando. Ahorita okay. se lo estoy enviando. Mm -hmm. Igual le va a pedir la fecha de inicio y la fecha de finalización. También se las estoy enviando ahorita para que lo puedan agregar. Sí, sir, what's your question?
finish. Good. I'm going to check right now. You check and you check. Yes. All right. I have Joshua has finished. Cesar, Christian, Adolfo, Cecilia has finished, Nancy has finished, David has finished, Hugo has finished, Melvin has finished, Oscar has finished. And let me check Felix, because it doesn't appear, but no Felix. You need to submit. Felix? Oh, no. Tiene que darle donde dice submit. Porque si no se la... No, no aparece el... el el examen completo. Ver, para los que ya terminaron ponen, eh, llenan la encuesta y recuérdense que siempre tienen que tomar la captura de pantalla y me la envían, ¿verdad? Bueno. Recuerden, llenan la encuesta le toman captura de pantalla y me la envían. Les va a pedir un código al inicio. Ese código es el que les mandé. Eh, es lo primero que les va a pedir. Es un código. Entonces ingresan ese código. De ahí les va a pedir institución con la que está obteniendo la, las, las clases. Tiene que buscar Speak porque hay varias instituciones. Entonces selecciona Speak. También le va a pedir la fecha de inicio del curso y fecha de finalización. Está allí. La, la del inicio fue el 31 de agosto. Y de finalización es ahora, que es 15 de octubre. Y envían la captura, así como ya la mandó Hugo. Teacher, the name of the curso. Y inglés para el trabajo. Primero de agosto comenzamos, perdón. 31, 31 ah, perdón, de agosto. Perdón. Ahí les mandé en el grupo, ahí está, 31 de agosto. Empezamos y terminamos ahora que es 15 de octubre. Ya recibí... Cecilia... Ya recibí. Santiago y Cesar. Ok, Cesar, Hugo, and also Cecilia.
I received Nancy's picture. So I only have four right now. I received David's picture. Oscar's picture. I received Joshua's picture. So we are missing only Felix, Melvin, Felix and Melvin. Well, uh, while they send the pictures, I will give you just last instructions. As you know, today is last day. Um, we need to wait for the new course to start. Unfortunately, uh, in our case, who is not going to continue with us? Because as you know, this course is only for, for Ironman. So it is a closed group for Ironman. So who is not working at Ironman right now? So he's working in another company and he cannot be in the group because of that. I wish he would be in this group for the rest of the course, but it's impossible because of Iron Man, because Iron Man has this group only for Iron Man, yes? Obviously, there are other groups where you have people from different companies and who can be part of that group too. So I motivate Hugo to be in the other group. I know that you will miss your classmates and they will miss you too. But probably one day we can have a meeting just to talk about our lives. Yes. And it was a pleasure to meet you. Hugo. I hope to see you one day. And if you are probably in another group, but always from speak, probably I will be your teacher. Maybe in the morning, because there is one group in the morning. So I don't know, maybe. So I can be your teacher in the future. Now, for the rest of you, we are going to continue with the, the course, and that course is going to start when Jessica sends you the information, because she needs to structure the, the, the group. And one problem was that this group started with some people, but those people never appeared. So at the end, you were just like some of you, but uh the good thing is that you continue so i motivate you to keep practicing keep continuing and just yes felix i received your your test now that the the survey and uh for those who haven't sent me the picture for the survey i need that picture today because uh that is a way for us to continue with the program if if we don't have that picture, we don't continue. So things are like that. So I really, really need that picture. And the other thing is that while we continue with the next level, I need you study 
or you practice with the applications that I sent you last time. If you remember, you had three applications. One was for listening and reading. One was for vocabulary, all kind of vocabulary. And you also had the other one that was related to grammar. So all those things are going to help you when you want to express your ideas, when you want to hear people talking. So that is one. The other one is that I'm going to send you a series. I'm going to send you a series that you're going to watch and you're going to be practicing every day. So that is going to help you a little bit to practice probably one week or two weeks that we are not going to be in, in class while we start next level, yes? Now I'm going to have the attendance and you have to tell me present when you hear your name. So there we go. Felix Ernesto Castellano. Felix Present. Ernesto Castellano. Okay. Next one. Josué Edmundo Avalos. Present, present. Good. Carlos is not here. Cesar Santiago Benavides. Present. Good. Cristian Armando Cardona. Christian, well, but Christian is there. The problem is that Christian has problem with the internet for, because of the rain. Uh, Herman is from Insaforp. Adolfo was in class, but the same thing because of the rain and because he was in training. Cecilia. Present. Nancy, Jasmine, Claudia. Present. Good, David Ricardo de Leon. Say present, maybe. <laughs> present, present. Okay. Luis is not here. Carolina is not here. Uh, Hugo Resto Fonseca. Present. Good. Melvin Jonathan Gallardo. Present. Good. Oscar Armando Gomez. Present. Good. Constantino is in another country. Uh, Flor is not here, uh, Raul is not here, so that's the attendance. Now, just to finish, Hugo, do you want to say something? Do you want to say something? Pues, bueno, en español, vea, muchas gracias y buena suerte a todos. Espero que nos podamos seguir comunicando. Cualquier onda, estoy a la orden. <laughs> Good. Gracias. 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 Y... Y lo que yo le aconsejo es que se mueva a otro grupo, ¿verdad? Para siempre continuar y nunca se detenga porque cuando alguien se detiene, después se acomoda. Después se acomoda y ya no sigue. Entonces mi consejo es ese. Siga hasta que termine. Y aunque yo sé que tal vez le va a hacer falta estar con sus compañeros, pero va a tener otros compañeros, se va a acoplar a ellos también. De igual manera va a ir saliendo con eso, ¿verdad? Y lo mismo va para todos, siempre seguir, nunca detenerse. Porque una vez se acomodan, en serio. He visto casos, pero que de estudiantes súper buenos, se detienen y ya cuando quieren regresar, ya no se acuerdan. ¿Por qué? Porque ya se acomodaron y no lo estuvieron practicando. Entonces, en su caso, le, le aconsejo eso, igual al resto, ¿verdad? En estos días que no vamos a tener clases porque van a estar estructurando el grupo para abrirlo, Tienen que estar practicando con esas aplicaciones para que no pierdan la sintonía, ¿verdad? Y eh, para la entrega de notas, yo se las voy a entregar mañana. Pero si ustedes se recuerdan, hay que completar las actividades de la semana 4. Hay que completar el foro evaluado y hay que completar la entrega de ejercicios. Si ustedes no han completado el foro evaluado y la entrega de ejercicios, no puedo sacar la nota final. Entonces necesito que ustedes terminen ese foro evaluado y entrega de ejercicios ahora o a más tardar mañana por la mañana para que yo pueda calificarlo, sacar su nota final y mandarle su nota ya completa, ¿verdad? Individualmente se la voy a estar mandando así como siempre lo hago, lo hago uno por uno y le doy su feedback, lo que puede mejorar, lo que está haciendo bien y eso sería mañana, ¿verdad? Entonces yo lo estaría haciendo por la tarde, 
entre la tarde y la noche yo estaría haciendo eso, mandándoles las notas, pero sí necesito que ya todos hayan completado las actividades. Como les repito, si no están todas las actividades, no se puede sacar el promedio, ¿sí? Entonces, solamente eso, los que estaban pendientes de mandar la captura, ya está Constantino, Cristian, Félix. Creo que solo... El teacher. En Melvin Gallardo. Melvin Gallardo. Yes. yes. Okay. So I have all the pictures and this is important because this is the way that we continue. If we don't get these pictures, they don't believe that you were here. And the other thing that I, uh, that I wanted to tell you is that probably uh, Insaforp is not here right now, but they are monitoring the classes. They observe if you are coming to classes, they watch the videos. And also in some groups, they enter to the class just to verify that everyone is in class. So next level, try not to miss classes so that you can have a perfect attendance and the group is not affected. Yes? So I don't know if you have any questions before leaving. No questions? No question. No. All right. So thank you for being there, guys. I see you all, I don't know when exactly, but I will send you the information to the WhatsApp group so that you can make sure that you have the information. And have a nice weekend. And if you haven't done the homework, do it. Do it. Yes? Have a good night. 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 See you. 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 See you.